web next. Uh, web three already taken by the you know the blockchain crowd. So if we want to talk about what's coming next in the world of web pages and browsers, maybe we can call this web next. And for the, those of you uh, who might have played ultimate frisbee, you, you'll know this already. But you know a, a soccer ball or a football, you know an amazing thing flies through the air, really great. But you know when a football is dreaming, it's it's thinking, oh man, if I could be a frisbee, that that would be great. You know if I just hover there for someone to make an amazing catch. So, uh, you know, think about things like that. What, what is a web page dream of being? You know, web page is, you know, maybe static. It's moved beyond the GeoCities time, but what is a web page dream it could be here in, in the future? So that is our question today, our research question. And by our, I mean us here at Tech Confluence, we'll get a little interactive here, get some of your thoughts on this. Uh, Add some more information. So, how should a web page work? Um, you know, web page can be anything. What 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 should it be? So, what are some of the things web pages do? Uh, I've got a few categories here, uh, and we'll, we'll add to this. I'm sure, you'll have some things I haven't thought of. Uh, so, I divided up a little bit here, though. Uh, you know, web pages often inform us of something. Going looking for some information, uh, they might entice us. Uh, you know, particularly if you work in marketing, you're thinking about web pages this way a lot. You know, how do you draw people in to learn more about you know, what your service is or you know, whatever it is that your web page is about? Uh, particularly in the last 10 years, we've had a huge explosion in entertainment. You know, we can stream video, we can play video games, we have interactive experiences on the web, uh, quite a lot of entertainment uh, things that we can primarily consume through a web page. Now, on the other hand, if you're a web developer, you're thinking quite a bit about you know, how people explore data or explore what's going on at a company. You might be building whole web applications to make all this visible. If you have an enterprise resource application, you're showing you know, all, how things move throughout the whole enterprise, allowing people to explore that and find problems or find opportunities. Uh, similarly, then uh, you might allow people to take action on that, to do work uh, within your web application, to execute some sort of command. And then we do a lot of collaboration. You know, we're doing it right now. Uh, have people go to a shared URL. We can bring them together, uh, whether that's a, a video call or other things. So uh, let's look at some examples here. And let's go ahead and, and we'll add to them a little bit. So this is the, our interactive portion. Um, so I'll go through uh, just a couple of these and then uh, have you chime in here. So uh, when we talk about informing, we might be going to web pages. Look, you know, is this place open? Uh, you know, what, what are the hours? Or we might be looking for some sort of, you know, answer or description. If we go to Wikipedia in particular, we're looking for, you know, answer to something. What is this? Define this word for me. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about how web pages might entice, you know, explain a service, show the different options, um, show uh, different possibilities, hopefully not with too many pop-ups, you know, hopefully use some other techniques. Um, you know, uh, streaming games experiences, kind of self-explanatory. Um, web applications, uh, views of data. We're often trying to, uh, you know, if we have a web application that we're having someone um, explore or do research in, we're trying to show views, lots of data. Uh, when we're doing work, you know, we might be buying something on Amazon, we're interacting with the physical world in some way, we're causing something to happen, um, or, you know, buying a service like airplane tickets or, or you know, reserving movie tickets, taking action in some way. And collaboration, of course, might be synchronous, like we're doing right now, um, or it could be something more asynchronous. Facebook could be a good example of that, where you're, you know, people can interact in real time, but most of the time it's, you know, uh, a bit more asynchronous, posting something, reacting to it later. Uh, but so, what are some other things? Uh, some maybe other modalities that I've totally forgotten, or just examples that come to mind of things that fit into some of these categories. What do you use the web for? Right? What's something you've done on the web recently? Malware comes to mind. <laughs> Malware. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> other category. OK, great. I'm going to. Um, Not sure where that fits in. Yeah. <laughs> Got a note stock here. I'm going to throw that into you. I mean, it's a challenging question because you, you've got these uh, four broad categories I'm trying to think outside of that. That's great. Maybe yeah, I mean, uh, one of the things that kind of came to mind, which I think you did kind of touch on, is uh, machine consumable. Um, as we move to like AI and augmented reality and, and uh, ability to potentially 
have computers find uh, information on the web for us and interact with it, like uh, Alexa and and other you know voice command oriented things. You know, we've kind of had like variations of things like RESTful and Hadios and um, you know RDF and Semantic Web kind of technology that sort of underlines the discovery of information. But as we kind of get a little bit more you know, like the, the web can be kind of a messy and, and the whole like mixing presentation and data. And, you know, sometimes you're, the presentation is somewhat separate from the actual underlying data model. So I can see maybe, you know, web next sort of being a better representation, flexible representation of that data model that then can be presented and interacted with in different ways like augmented reality you're at the grocery store and, you know, like I said, you, you got the ability to like see price information, you know, via your, your glasses, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think I, uh, definitely a whole category. Um, and I, I feel like this informed category, I've given it a different color here um, to get into that a little bit. Um, Cause I think that's a, a really great insight. Other ways, other, other things you do that good exemplars of these categories or just something else. Another way you use a web page. All right. Well, something something to think about. So yeah. Um, uh, okay. Oh, uh, I was going to say authentication. Authentication. That's a great one. Yeah, your identity um, in all these spaces. That's that's a really good one. Uh, maps. Maps, yeah. Reading maps, looking up locations. That's interesting. Uh, like, you know, part, partly uh, fits in exploration and research, you might you know, exploring around on the map, but you could also present a lot of data in the map, or, um, a lot of things you do with maps, yeah. Great, so I'm capturing all these in a notes doc. I, I forgot that when it's in presentation mode, it's not very editable here on this slide, so. Okay. Uh, well, one thing, oh, sorry. Oh no, go ahead. Uh, one thing that I do, I'm not sure if it's relevant, but um, often the browser itself will be more helpful for finding things quickly than going to a web page and waiting for it to load and uh, hunting through it and everything. So sometimes um, I'll just Google something and then scan through the results and and find something. Uh, really quickly based on the title of a web page or the little blurb that it gives you. So I don't know if that's relevant, but sometimes the search engine itself is more helpful for me than um, going to any page in particular. So I guess SEO. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, that is uh, a huge case. And I think that um, that whole direction, that means Kurt talked about it a little bit, and as you just said, Miranda, um, that being, all that machine consumable data and being able to not go to the web page at all, not have any presentation, um, it is a huge direction. Um, it's not the direction I'm going to talk about at all. So I wanted to just kind of like <laughs> slide that off. So a, a huge amount of innovation and you know, being able to just see things or I mean hear things in um, Alexa, um, get directly to the answer you want, um, have it extracted out of the web page. I think is a big direction. And um, as you build web pages, you'd be thinking about great. How do people not come here at all? But today we're going to talk about uh, presentation and you know what you want when people do come to your web page. So uh, move past data into all those other categories. Uh, we touched on maps. Uh, humans navigate spatially. You know, there's millions of areas of evolution that have really rewarded that. So that's something that you know we can really take advantage of, and that people are starting to we're starting to see more and more and more of that. Um, you know, for instance. Uh, just to kind of dream about this a little bit, but, you know, some web page dreams here. Um, what if all your browsing was in kind of one forest or, you know, whatever metaphor you might uh, personally like, let's say you like forests and you choose that as your, your browsing metaphor. You know, maybe all your uh, work sites and the, the, the graph of, of web pages um, that are work related or, you know, these trees over here and, you know, over here are your hobbies. Uh, you've got kind of a landscape that you can navigate spatially. Uh, maybe between web pages or you know on a particular site or on a particular page. 
So uh, you're talking here about you know, visual navigation and visual memory, you know, the ability to consume a lot of information um, you know, visually and you know, to kind of come around the corner of your you know, navigation and be like, oh, I remember this, this looks familiar. But uh, when we're talking spatially, uh, you know, maybe you're not a visual learner, or maybe you're visually impaired. So you could focus on other um, spatial aspects. You can have a spatial auditory overlay. It could still encode a lot of that information uh, spatially, but you can still navigate around. Or perhaps you are, you know, really, you learn well kinetically. Um, movement uh, kind of helps you remember things. So just by, you know, sifting some of that information more kinetically, that gives you some spatial awareness, ability to navigate spatially, and maybe remember some of that spatially. So uh, directions that we can think about. So uh, let's look at some examples, got kind of a survey of some of the things that people are doing um, in you know, this kind of spatial uh, web space and uh, directions that you might want to build your websites and experiences to satisfy some of these different things that the, the web does. So uh, most of the examples um, are kind of VR oriented. Um, partly there's just a lot going on with spatialness in virtual reality, so it's a great place to look. Um, but all of these examples are in a browser. So you can go on a desktop, you can see them. We'll, we'll go to several of them here. Um, and I'll, I'll try and show you some of the, the virtual reality experience as well. Okay, so uh, here's a screenshot of the browser in virtual reality, um, just to sort of see us crossing worlds here. So it's a web page. So of course we get a cookie pop up. Wouldn't be a web page without a cookie pop up these days. Key feature of the web, apparently. Um, but we've got a web page. And you know we can read web, regular web pages even when we're in a spatial environment like uh, virtual reality. So regular 2D web page here. Uh, but browsers are so great. Um, you know the the web is really powerful, and the way we browse things is really powerful um, because you know everything is just a link away. It's really low friction to you know just get from one place to another, and um, there's really low barrier to entry. You can publish something. You can you know have your half baked idea. Get it up as a web page, your friend sees it and is like, wow, that's great. Let's let's go with that. Whereas, you know, if you've got to get it into an app store, you know, maybe that process never gets kicked off. So really uh, nice democratic features of the way that um, URLs and browsers currently work. And that's a, a huge advantage, um, even over app stores, which have a lot of other advantages, security, for instance, um, but great things about the web. So uh, maybe I want to do some shopping. I want to pick out something for my kitchen. The ability to look at things spatially and uh, go around, see how things look in relation to each other is really powerful. Maybe I want to kind of wander around while I'm doing that, you know, just as though I was in Ikea. See some things, oh, I didn't think about how that toaster would look with that. That's great. It's a great idea. I should get a toaster over there too. So that ability to wander uh, is definitely really nice. And let's go ahead and do some of this live here. Um, Uh, you know, maybe I want to edit some of that, for instance, also a really powerful feature. But let's open up an example. Maybe. Wouldn't be a, a demo without some technical difficulties, right? Okay. So we're going to go into a showroom here and uh, see what our spatial shopping experience might look like. So now I've got a nice room here. I can wander around Ikea style. Go and click on this couch here. So, oh yeah, that's great. Uh, but I want it in black. Yep, I have that. Let's see, yep. Around a little more. I was just coming in here for a couch, but oh man, that chair, that'd be great too. Be, uh, you know, maybe I'm Batman. So I want everything black, try that out. There we go. Okay, so shopping a little more spatially, um, pretty compelling, pretty cool. Definitely a nice, uh, nice way to navigate. And uh, I've got a couple more examples here. Everyone's familiar with Street View, I'm sure. Uh, Street View is really neat, um, but you can imagine that being like more smooth and interactive. <clears throat> so um, here I've got an example that's video, and uh, they've done some really interesting things here where. Uh, they filmed over time and then made that a feature. So as you um, browse, time goes by as well. And this opens up a random moment. So we'll see what we have here. Um, great. So now we're here in uh, Tokyo, it looks like. 
And as we move around, we can see time passing. So another really cool spatial feature. Uh, video games, easy case for 3D. Everyone's probably kind of familiar with doing some games in the browser, seeing a map, navigating spatially in that respect. And, uh, you know, certainly used to having 3D units and things there. Um, <clears throat> not too new, but let's say that um, perhaps, you know, maybe I'm in virtual reality and I want to jump right into the game. So that's something that your users might be doing, that by having something that's already kind of spatially aware on your website, you can have some users using it in the desktop, other ones in virtual reality using it differently. Great thing here, maybe all these explosions are obscuring some of what's going on. Uh, here in virtuality, I can easily move around and get a different view of things. Uh, definitely pretty fun. Once we're doing that, we can really start getting immersive. So here we've got some fashion design and uh, really neat experience. We're not in VR, so we'll start in not VR here. See some of T.G. Rogers' artwork here. And um, so this is you know, sort of a 3D video where we can really see a creative process in action and get different views of it, see how this artist is thinking about this creation, uh, which is really powerful. Definitely great. You want to learn some skill, this is a nice way to do it. And, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the collaboration. Perhaps we, uh, Tech Confluence, all want to collaborate on our next uh, space vehicle, of course, sort of thing we, we could do here. Uh, if this, uh, this is not collaborative, but if we're more collaborative, it'd be a really neat environment to uh, you know, have someone kind of leading a discussion, creating something here, having other people chime in. Uh, they might be in virtual reality where you get a really good view of this. But you can see that even in a browser, we get a pretty good view. Uh, so we really have some interesting use of space going on. And uh, great for education. So um, sample here on the left um, explains flight uh, to students, gives you a nice view of being in a classroom, which kind of look around so really cool use. Uh, this one on the right, uh, I can't show you very well uh, because it's, uh, it's a documentary, but um, I'll post these slides and it's worth checking out. So it's a combination of video and interactive maps that you can move around and does an amazing job of using space and time and telling a story. Um, so definitely uh, really cool and, and innovative. Definitely not, not what you think of as a web page. Uh, education is great, but just, you know, straight up science is great too. So we can uh, we can go to Mars here and uh, really get a feel for uh, some of this in a way that we might not in a regular web page. So wait for our Mars lander to land here. And then we can start interacting with our environment spatially. Okay, wait for it to power up. Got some good sound effects that probably don't come through on the uh, recording, but it's very nice. And you can see here that it's spatial. So I can move around. I can kind of start forming some memory of where this different information is in terms of the space that I'm in. And then I can go ahead and start clicking on different things here. So maybe I want to know about the uh, uh, arm here. Great, robotic arm, pretty cool. Okay, we're in a video call right now, of course, but uh, you know, maybe if you're in that all the time, you want a little more depth to your virtual meetings. Um, this is the Hubs product from Mozilla, virtual space that you can uh, go in and have meetings and interact. Uh, maybe we'll move tech conference there sometime. Um, but really nice for uh, having a little space, having yeah, you know, different places you can go and have smaller conversations, um, just have a more interesting environment. So maybe we need a, a fish tank to, to look at. Uh, and, you know, it's, of course, really nice in VR, but it does also work on desktop as well, so it kind of bridges those different modalities. Uh, that sort of collaboration, you can do lots of different ways, uh, virtual whiteboards. This is a, a screenshot from VR where you can use it. Um, you could be collaborating with people, again, who are on desktop. Uh, I found this a little bit clumsy to use, uh, but you can imagine that people will get better and better at this, so you could really do some of that whiteboarding in a virtual space that we miss uh, from real life. Okay, so that was a lot of different website dreams there of, of different directions people might uh, be going with websites um, as we build the, the next um, type of the web here. 
and um, hopefully that got you a bit interested in, in building more more spatial websites or just, just building out in some new directions. So how do we build these? Well, uh, there's a lot of great standards now. Um, WebGL is a really nice one. And I'll show you my favorite map example here um, using WebGL. So it's web um, graphics layer and uh, really nice uh, for building all sorts of 3D experiences. In this case, uh, great for visualizing data. This deck.gl is a really nice library for visualizing data of all sorts and allowing people to play with it spatially. Uh, WebAssembly, subject of the next talk, uh, really nice for allowing us to build these uh, more complex experiences, uh, A, however we want, uh, but great tool for that is Dimensions, which is Unity and Unreal. And then uh, if your users are in virtual reality or augmented reality, uh, have some sort of device, uh, there's this Web XR device API. That's what powered a lot of those screenshots um, we saw in terms of allowing the user to interact in virtual reality uh, with your website. So that's all for today. Let's go ahead and switch to uh, Q&A.